What? Sorry? Hey guys, and welcome to Trista Bites. I can't believe it's been four years on YouTube and pretty much six months on Twitch as well. It's insane. The time has just flown. So I thought, despite all of my better judgment, that I would throw it out there and say, hey, let's do a Q&A where you guys can ask me anything you like, even though that's clearly a very dangerous idea. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the questions. Hi Bex, congratulations for four years on YouTube. And as it's been four years, my question is, what are your top four favourite Atari Jaguar games? Four Jaguar games? That's so difficult. So I've got five. Failing to answer the first question and starting as we mean to go on. So obviously, like I love the Jaguar. It, it has Tempest 2000, legendary game by a, made by a legendary, wonderful human being. And uh, that has to be on the list. Like, Tempest 2000 has to be on the list. If you have a Jaguar, or even if you don't and you want a Jaguar, worth it for this game alone. Absolutely amazing. So that's going on the list. Um, and I do really love Cybermorph, the, the game that came as the pack-in game with the console that everyone hated apart from me, with the sarcastic AI, uh, where did you learn to fly and all of that. I, I love this game. So that's kind of got to be on the list, right? And, and then you've got things like um, Alien vs Predator that I spent £17 on in cash converters, according to this big here sticker. And Alien vs Predator, awesome version of the game. Really, really good to play. Stands the test of time, I think, personally, having not played it in a very long time. But really really one of the best versions of this game if not the best console version of this game and again another must have if, if you have a jaguar so yeah that's already three and then i'm torn because there are two other games that i have very very close to my heart one is iron soldier iron soldier is the reason i bought the jaguar uh, one of my friends brothers had this game i played it once and i just thought oh my god you can be a giant mech and you can tread on tanks sold instant sale i had to have a jaguar that was it that was me sold so that game's very special place in my heart it's it's not got the best collision detection it's not the best game in the world i am told that um uh, there was a sequel to it on the jaguar cd i've never played that was really good i'm told battle morph which was the sequel to cyber morph on the jaguar cd was also very good also again not got to play that myself but that's what i've heard from people in the know um but yeah iron soldiers that holds a very important place in my heart but also I spent a lot of time, possibly more time in fact, playing Theme Park on the Jaguar. Now you could play this game on a lot of other systems, you could play this on PC and things like that. But I, I only played this on the Jaguar and I loved it. I spent twenty four ninety nine on this one, according to the sticker on the front there. And I used to just build uh, amusement rides where they went out of the park, where they crashed into walls. Um, I did everything wrong. I, I never did particularly well at this game, but I had an amazing time playing it. And many, many, I'd say hours, I mean days, were sunk into theme park. Um, yeah, I love them both. So... Um, that's five. Sorry? Chrissy says, whose shoes have you got on today? Um, yeah, this is because of a recent tweet which I put up because I have insomnia and that makes me very tired and um, I was getting some physio and chiropractor stuff recently and um, I was so tired that I put on someone else's shoes um, they looked really similar to my shoes. They were so similar. They they were they had the same distinctive lining because they were the same brand. No one else has Fly London shoes. They're really unusual boots. Uh, thankfully, I spoke to the lady because she makes amazing like watercolory oil painting like patterned leggings. Um, and I just said your leggings are amazing. She said, Oh, I make them. And we got in a conversation. She said, You're wearing my shoes. And I said, Oh, it's a seam. I am wearing your shoes. Sorry. And then I put my own shoes back on. But today. I am, I've checked and I'll check again, definitely wearing my own shoes. We're fine people, <laughs> we're fine. Hello Trista Bites, if that's even your real name, it is I, Robin from Coaching for Geeks with a question. And that is, what game, what video game would you most like to see us turn into a video game in real life that we can make future victims play? <laughs> So for those of you who were at EGX in London this year, yeah, I was up on stage with Coaching for Geeks and we put on a crazy, insane, farcical, wonderful game show called Video Games IRL, where we recreated video games in real life. Clues in the title. It was brilliant fun. We had an absolutely amazing time up there. And yeah, I think we could add one more game to that roster. 
and I think I'm going to pick Street Fighter. I want to see people hadoukening each other up there. I don't think they'll let us have real fire, but I'm sure with our Poundland budget, we can come up with something. Hey, Tristan, what's going on? It's Mike from The Roger Collectors. I'd like to congratulate you on six months on Twitch and four-year anniversary on YouTube. My question for you is, what is your favorite gaming memory that you ever had from Christmas? Look forward to hearing back from you real soon. Bye, guys. I came up with this. Yes, it is Sonic 3D. Look at it. Even the cover is jumping out of the screen into your face. Look at that font. It is from the future, which is uh, pretty much what I thought when this game got released, to be honest. I had to have it for Christmas and my wonderful mother saved up so I could play this game on release. Back in, I can check on the back, 1996. Fellow YouTuber Oddpod says, what is your earliest cartoon memory? Um, that's a difficult one. I think definitely very early on I was watching a lot of My Little Pony and my first cinema memory is the My Little Pony movie. So that's definitely a very early cartoon memory. I was very little when that film came out. Um, so that's definitely a very, very early one. I don't know. I think... One of the most distinctive ones from when I was very young is the Paw Paw Bears, or Paw Paws as I think it's actually called. And that was something that everyone seemed to forget apart from me. I loved and adored that cartoon and then I'd mention it to people and the, the, the totem pole thing and the transforming into the animals thing and, and everyone just look at me blankly. And for a while I thought maybe I imagined it until the joys of YouTube and the internet meant I could accidentally rediscover this cartoon many, many years later. So I think probably one of those two, definitely for strong, uh, distinct memories of series I loved uh, rather than just things that that were on the TV that everyone watched like early Tom and Jerry and stuff like that so yeah I think we'll, we'll go with um, definitely for the cinema uh, My Little Pony and possibly for the home Paw Paws but we'll have to check on the dates for which one actually came first because I didn't read any of these questions in advance yay <laughs> I'll draw all the kitties and I'll own all the kitties and no one can have the kitties but me especially not that tree <coughs> Hey, just uh, congratulations on your four-year anniversary on uh, YouTube and your six-month six six-month six anniversary on Twitch. Uh, my question for you is: What's the most flattering or sweet thing that someone's done for you? No, wait. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened on stream? Oh, how about a um, um, favorite clipped moment? Go on, you answer. I'll wait here. I look like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, Lucan. Well, the most embarrassing thing to happen to me on stream just happened, which is why I'm now shooting this tiny bit of extra footage to cut in to replace the answer I gave earlier. Um, but yeah, I think the most embarrassing thing so far is is what just occurred. <laughs> I, I overran the Twitch stream by 45 minutes. Um, we were playing Diablo 3 and then we were just talking and I said, I'm sorry I've overrun. Uh, I just don't shut up. At which point the computer blue screened in protest. And that was the end of the stream. So that's that's pretty embarrassing. Um, my computer Skynet definitely has opinions, let's say, on things. Other than that, the most embarrassing moment that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure is clipped. It's not the walking off the ledge in Golden Axe. I do that kind of thing all the time. I think it will be the bit where uh, I was unboxing... Oh, was it was it the stuff from Numskull? The 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 tubs ducks? Was it the unboxing of those? Uh, either that or it was the um, unboxing of the the Batman stuff from Paladone. And um, someone said, "Ah, oh, bubble wrap! Pop the bubble wrap!" And I was, but it was a different kind of bubble wrap. It wasn't normal bubble wrap. And I twisted the bubble wrap and uh, didn't expect it to pop, and it did. And I made myself jump and squeaked really loudly. So that's probably the most embarrassing clip that's circulating the internet. Because yeah. I'd sounded like someone had stepped on a really loud mouse, making myself jump, popping bubble wrap myself in a room on my own, live on camera. Well done, me. <laughs> Cheeky Chrissy says, if you were a Pokemon, what would you be and why? I don't know a huge amount of Pokemon, um, but I would have to be Umbreon because goth. 
that's that's pretty much as far as my thinking goes. It's cool. I've seen a hoodie of it, which was black and blue, which was amazing, um, that I quite badly want for some point in the future. And yeah, I think for that reason, Umbreon, goth. Or there's one that looks kind of like a kitty that's like black and red. Whatever that one is would be my second choice. Um, but yeah, I haven't really played much of the Pokemon games. I know I've got a video of me in the Pokemon DX Center in Tokyo, which I loved because the character designs are so cute. I, I really love all the designs of the Pokemon, they're adorable, but yeah, I haven't really played the games, so I tend to just call them things that I call them. Like when I was playing Pokemon Go, I was just like, ah, useless rat and shit pigeon. And <laughs> I just kind of named them myself, um, which seems to work. People usually know what I mean. I'm sure that works, right? VR Twitch streamer VR Bug says, if you were on a desert island and could only take one game on any platform with you, what would it be? That's... That's a horrible question, VR Bug. Why would you do that to me? That's difficult. I've just answered a question which involved Tempest 2000, one of my favourite games of all time. So that's difficult because obviously... It, it, no, I need a genre. I need a platform. I can't answer that. That's too difficult. Um, Tempest, Tempest would be high on the list. Um, probably also... Can, can the Luna Silver Star games count as one because they're like one continuous story for Luna Silver Star and, and, and Eternal Blue. Can they count as one? Maybe? Because it's a, it's a two part thing. It's a contained thing. Um, those are some of my favourite RPGs. Um, I don't know, it would have to be a game that would last. I'm assuming I can't take like Quake 3 Arena with me and just forever pay against um, people online on Quake 3 Arena on the desert island. I'm assuming mean at least it's kind of like a single player game that could be encapsulated in a, in a desert island type situation, not something where I could type, help, please rescue me from this desert island, or at least bring more chocolate and games. Um, so yeah, I think it would have to be a really epic RPG game, something that has an massive epic storyline and would keep me busy for as long as humanly possible before I went mad on the island. I think that's a sensible choice. Hi Bex, Keith from the Digital Orphanage here. Congratulations on four entertaining years on YouTube, and Merry Christmas to you and your fans. Being well read in Cyberpunk, I thought the following question would entertain your wetware. Released in 1982, the seminal Blade Runner was set 37 years into the future otherwise known as this year. It painted a dystopian image of human replicants almost indistinguishable from the real thing. A messed up climate, flying cars, and of course, Atari still being a thing, with only one of those predictions correct. What do you think Christmas 2049 will be like? Cheers. Christmas 2049, um, I don't know, either Waterworld or Tank Girl or they better have my flying cars if the planet's still here. Um, yeah, I think that question could get into quite into the, the proper philosophical and and meh. or on Mars. That's that's the other option we've got really. That's where I see things going. Um, either it is going to be Blade Runner by that point, uh, or it will be Waterworld, or it will be Tank Girl, or it will we will be living on Mars. Sorry about that. That's kind of like the chirpiest thing I can come up with. <laughs> Right, onto something that's a bit more chirpy, hopefully. Hi Trista, Richard here from Games Freezer. Um, quick question, crisps in your sandwich, yes or no? See you soon. I haven't put crisps in a sandwich for a very long time. I rarely even eat crisps. Um, I did used to do a very weird thing as a child though, which was to dip salt and vinegar crisps into milk. I don't think anyone else did that. Um, so I don't really feel like I could give much of an opinion on crisps and sandwiches after a peculiar habit like that one, especially considering it turned out I'm incredibly allergic to milk, which should never have been drinking it in the first place. Um, but yeah, crisps and sandwiches, I'm going to go with my vague memory says yes. But I also say yes to pineapple on pizza. So you may all now shout at each other in the comments section below. And I don't like tea. Grail asks, and it's a long one, I'm going to have to read this one out. There was once a paper cut, paper cut, a power cut, we'll get there, in a comic shop once. One person declared, they cut the power. And sure enough, the comic shop turned into aliens. How can they cut the power? They're animals, man. So my question is, what's your favourite quote from a sci-fi film? That's a difficult one. 
Oh my goodness. Like part of me wants to go straight into Total Recall and be like, two weeks, that's that's classic. You can use that in a variety of situations. I also use Multipass from Fifth Element. That I've said that many times in real life and um, mostly without people looking at me like I'm from another planet. Uh, although, eh, sometimes. Uh, other than that, almost everything they say at all at any point in Demolition Man. Um, yeah, there's so many quotable lines from that. There's no point me even choosing one um demolition man is one of the most crazily quotable films out there so that's a really vague answer but it is at least an answer at all renasis asks dual cases or slim cases what's your preference oh that's difficult um often dual cases get damaged um, but I do like the fact you see more of the artwork and the side spine, you get more of the artwork and stuff like that. But for, for space saving, hmm, slim, ah, I, th I think probably, especially with older games, nostalgia value, uh, I'll go with dual cases, I think, because that's, that's my memory of how I played those games first time round. So I think, I think we're going for dual cases, despite the fact they're impractical and the Dreamcast ones just turn into dust if you look at them for too long. Still going with that. Kieran asks, where did, does the saying as smart as a chimp's binoculars originate? Is that a saying? What? Do I need to look this up? Hang on. Pause for looking up things on the internet. I've never heard this before. The internet's now going really slow. The search results don't yield anything relevant. I have no idea what that question is. If anyone knows the answer to that, please put it in the comments below and let me know what that question was about. Thank you. Kieran Reeves says, congratulations on four years on YouTube and six months on Twitch. Thank you very much. It's very kind. As a huge Red Dwarf fan, my question is, which Red Dwarf character would you say you're the most like? Ah, uh, that's a difficult one. I think um, first thing in the morning, if I don't want to get out of bed and I'm very tired, you're likely to get Rimmer levels of sarcasm and grumpiness out of me. But the rest of the time, I think, or at least I think most people would think I was a lot more like my favourite character, which is Cat, due to boundless levels of energy and silliness and I think that's yeah that's probably the closest Bill Thorpe from Late Night Reviews who makes the awesome cardboard things says um who are you voting for hang on that's way too boring good I'm glad you changed your question <laughs> do you like animals and if so which is your favorite I do like animals who doesn't like animals um uh, my favourite animals, mostly cats. The answer is cats. Um, they're definitely, I grew up with like many cats. <laughs> so definitely cats is, is my favourite animal. But I do also very, very much like foxes, wolves, dogs, and most animals, in fact. Um, anything with four or zero to four legs. Anything with zero to four legs, I'm very, very happy with. <laughs> I'm not afraid of animals based on size or anything like that. I grew up with an Alsatian that was huge. I used to sleep on its tummy, like the kid in Totoro sleeps on Totoro's tummy and um, I have no fear of, of animals of any size and things like that so yeah I like I like all animals as long as they've got four or less legs basically got a question from grumpy retro gamers Ben and Chris from we call ourselves GRG at this point oh yeah might as well just says GRG everywhere doesn't it yeah okay hey what's up Tristy hello um this is Ben and Chris from GRG, um, and we have a question for you. We do you. indeed. Do you want to? Do you want to ask the question? I'm excited. Our, our question is: What would be your dream interview? Oh, I.e., yeah. interviewee. Who would you really love to interview? Who you haven't? It doesn't have to be in within the industry no. of gaming or tech or anything like that. Um, what is your dream interview? Could just be, would like to know. Could be Gandhi. <laughs> We're just interested. A bit late, but yeah. <laughs> That's our question. <laughs> so you're called GRG now? Okay. Just too cool. You're, you, you know, it's like Prince turning his name into a symbol or something. Just, but not quite because it's not a symbol. It's still, I'm going to shut up. Also, Tristy. Yes. <laughs> um, what would be my dream interview? That's a, yeah, that's, um... 
without just saying something ridiculously self-serving like Tom Hiddleston, I'm assuming. Like an actual thing that would be an interview and not just a restraining order. Um, that's a difficult one. I've already had the opportunity to, to meet and be involved in interviews with some people who I... I absolutely cannot believe I, I have been in a room with like Kevin Conroy. You know, that's 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 been an amazing experience. I would have loved to have had the chance to interview Tara Strong or Arlene Sorkin about their roles as being the voice for Harley Quinn, because obviously she's a very beloved character. Um, but yeah, there are so many people. And it's weird because sometimes I really do enjoy interviewing people that I don't know anything about, like talking to people making their indie games. I mean, if you watch back through the indie games playlist on YouTube, um, there is an interview for a computer game called The Collage Atlas. And I saw that game and I really, really badly wanted to feature it. Um, and it took me like, I think it was two EGXs or something before I had the chance to interview the creator. And I spend the entire interview just looking at him, just going like, you are so talented. <laughs> because <laughs> that game is all completely hand drawn pen and paper just eight hours to draw each tree in that game and um i think of the interviews i've done like that's one of the ones where i was just in awe of the person's talent um and definitely reasonably high on the list as well is bill thorpe from late night reviews uh, who i really want to interview who asked the question earlier because his stuff is incredible again he's making stuff with cardboard he's creating these just phenomenal things and i want to ask a million questions about how he has made everything in his videos and that will hopefully happen at some point because like his stuff's incredible as well other than that um moving outside of kind of the computer games and comic booksy type areas i think a musician called devon townsend would be incredibly high on the list he's phenomenal his his work the things he creates the it's somewhere between movie soundtrack music and and heavy metal and orchestral opera and everything like just he's absolutely incredible uh gary newman's another person this is just a massive long list now this isn't a sensible answer whatsoever gary newman is another person i would absolutely really really like to meet and interview tim burton as well um, or if this could be any time in history um not gandhi um so probably somebody like alfred hitchcock i would like to talk to him about his work and his films because they're incredible there's so many people stop asking me difficult questions you're gonna get long rambling useless answers and then i will just stop and go on to the next question. Beardy Viking jumps straight in with a question that's going to make me scowl. Scowly face. <laughs> Who is the best turtle and why is it Donatello? <sighs> the best turtle is Raphael. All right. <laughs> we have this argument enough on Twitch, dude. We do. You know it. I'm right. You're wrong. I know you say Raphael is the second best turtle, but you're still wrong. Raphael is the best turtle. Okay? All right. I'm glad we got that one settled. Yeah. Mic drop right there. <laughs> Hello, Bex. Muso here, and I have a question for you. Given that God is infinite, and that the universe is also infinite, would you like a toasted tea cake? Hmm? What? Sorry? Hi Bex, Sorax from Sorax Space here. I've got a question for you. Uh, what is the weirdest but most wonderful thing that you've ever seen? It could be a game, it could be a comic, it could be something you've seen on your travels. What is something you've seen that's really weird, really strange, but wonderful because of it? Thank you for your question, Sorax. Um, I don't know. This is also a difficult question. You guys are supposed to be my friends. <laughs> um, weird, specifically weird and wonderful. Um, there was the, the, the cat in Japan. I saw, I'll try and find a picture of it. There's a massive cat that's doing a handstand and flipping the bird. That was pretty awesome. That made me smile for a significant amount of time. So I think that's quite high up on the list. Does it have to specifically be weird? Can it not just be awesome? <laughs> no, because it's you. Um, yeah, that's definitely quite high on the list, definitely. I think we'll go with that for now until I think of something better, no doubt, immediately after I finish recording. <laughs> Chase Mad Gamer says, what got you into gaming? Um, games existing and being just basically the future, magical things appearing on a screen. I just, yeah, as soon as I saw a computer, let alone a computer game, I was completely 
enthralled. I wanted to know how they worked. I can imagine if I'd had access to something that ran basic, um, I could imagine I would have gone straight into programming. Um, as it was, I didn't get into sort of Cody things more until doing front end web later. There was, I just didn't have any access to it, sadly. But I mean, in school, we had um, a series of Acon Electrons and they could do the thing where you write, go forward this many pixels, turn this many degrees, draw a line, and you could draw shapes with it. And also we had a Latin verb learning quiz program. And we only got to go in there like once a month or something. And I loved them. Oh my God, I love them so much. The Acorn Electron makes me so happy even today. And it was just the screen that was the, the black screen with the green lines, loved it. Uh, and then someone said like, oh, there's actual games you can play like on these things. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so. Yeah, I wanted to play anything and everything back then. I played on um, computer games around at Friends. Um, I can't entirely remember which systems they had. I played a little bit of everything. I definitely remember loading cassette games, um, but I couldn't tell you exactly which systems they were in. I, I just didn't really think about it at that point. I was just grateful for being allowed to play any game ever. Um, but we didn't actually own a games console in my family until the uh, Master System. We had a Master System 2 with Alex Kid and Middle World built in. We also had the gun, so we had Operation Wolf and uh, Rescue Mission, things like that. Absolutely loved it. Um, and from there, just hooked, utterly hooked. I spent forever saving up to get my Mega Drive, which is that one there. I saved up my pocket money, birthday money, Christmas money, everything. That was all on me. Um, and my mum was so incredibly proud. She bought me Megalomania to go with it because she couldn't believe I'd actually saved my money up because I'd been just spent it on chocolate each week up to that point. But it gave me something to aim for, a goal. And um, yeah, gaming was one of those things that really, really, really just um, gave me a, a goal and a thing I wanted because I just could not get enough of them. Uh, I also was massively into drawing and the artwork in the Japanese games, which I obviously didn't know necessarily where they were from at the time, but the JRPGs, the character designs, I just, I loved them. The artwork was incredible. Uh, it was the same thing that got me into comic books it was I wanted to draw the things in the comic books, then started reading the comic books, then became hooked on the comic books. So uh, a similar kind of things drew me in really, just a, a new and something new and exciting that spoke to me personally. That's the reason I have multicolored hair. <laughs> and um, yeah, I became an avid gamer for a very long time at that point. And speaking of hair, um, Edman C4 says, when did you join the blue hair fam and what made you want to dye it blue? Um, my hair's been every colour. You're welcome to go back through, especially my Instagram profile pictures and things. And um, yeah, I, I have had every colour of hair and quite a few different styles of hair as well. Uh, I wasn't allowed to bleach my hair until I was 16. That was the rule. My mum was not very strict on a lot of things, but she was like, no bleach in your hair until you are 16. So as soon as I turned 16, immediately the hair went purple. And it's been purple quite a few times. Purples, blues, greens, um, pink and black and blue at one point. I used to have braids. I had woolen dreads at some point. I'll try and drag some pictures up or something to put in here. <laughs> but it's been a whole massive range of styles and colours. And it, yeah, yeah, it was basically because I wanted to look like Psylocke or a character from Fantasy Star or Final Fantasy, that kind of thing. Um, that was it. That was my, my sole motivation was I wanted to look like a comic book and computer game character. And uh, it's blue quite a lot of the time because I make it purple and it fades to blue. But I also like blue. So that's a win. So that's, um, yeah, that's pretty much how that happens. And straight into another question about hair. Uh, Sanye Music asks, how do you maintain your awesome multicolored hair? I have two colors and I'm trying to figure out how to move forward without breaking the bank at the salon. Um, I spend basically nothing on my hair. I bleach my hair myself using, um, I, I basically buy up the bleach when it's on offer. So I have that. And um, then I use a hair color called Directions Hair Color, which you can kind of just mix like paint. Uh, it just washes out, it's just temporary. And as it fades out, it fades through pastel colors. So it just kind of sorts itself out for the most part. Um, and then I can just put more dye on and I'm at no risk of doing any damage with the hair dye. Obviously with the bleach, you know, but I figure if it all falls out, I'll just go full tank girl. <laughs> but yeah, the hair dye, you can just keep redoing that hair dye because it is just effectively like a, a vegetable dye. It's not, it's not a hair dye hair dye. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's quite fun and easy. I do end up occasionally dyeing a lot of me, purple, green, blue, yellow, pink, whatever. But I think that that just comes with the territory. Aras Elric asks, given the recent success of games like Arkham City and Spider-Man, is there any comic book character you'd like to see starring in their own video game? And what kind of game would you like it to be? Oh, 
Oh, that's difficult. Because if I was going to go for like a big cyberpunk RPG type thing, it'd be like Transmetropolitan. Like that needs to happen. Uh, there's also up here, you can possibly see in the background, uh, there is Metal Made Flesh, which is a cyberpunk comic made by some friends of mine. That would make a pretty awesome, because it's kind of Game of Thronesy meets Ghost in the Shell kind of situation. That would make a kind of awesome action RPG type thing. Um... Ah, oh, that's difficult. Raptor Rage asks, uh, crispy bacon or smoked bacon? Uh, neither bacon, I'm afraid. I've eaten maybe a centimetre squared amount of some kind of honeyed bacon that just sort of tasted like sugar. And that's my only experience of eating bacon in my entire life. It's not enough to form an opinion, I'm afraid. But generally I don't like things that are smoked flavoured. So, um, yeah, probably that but I'm basing that on zero life experience. Sorry. So, Propane Key sent in a video question. <coughs> Shit! Uh, bless you? Zacharlis one said, what was your favorite toy Father Christmas brought to you as a kid? And blow us a Christmas kiss. Well, I guess Merry Christmas. <laughs> to all of you guys for being awesome. Uh, oh, I don't know. Again, this is so difficult. Um, I think probably Sylvanian families. I remember one year where we would put down one thing, or we put down a little list for my mom to pick one thing that she could get us each year for Christmas. And one year I put down that I wanted the double decker Sylvanian bus and also that I wanted the ice cream parlor uh, vehicle as well, which has a little horse and ice cream on it. And bless her incredible woman that she bought me both. <laughs> and um, I was shocked and amazed and so happy. It was ridiculous uh, to get both of these things for Christmas and I played with them forever. And I still have them. In fact, I love and adore these things. And um, yeah, I think, I mean, I loved Sylvanian Family's miniatures. When I got a model railway set as well, uh, any model railway buildings, anything like that um, made me so incredibly happy. But I think, uh, I mean, we knew, we knew Father Christmas was Mummy Christmas. We said Mummy Christmas for quite a while. So um, yeah, probably the Sylvanian Family's because because I just, I didn't expect it. I really, really didn't expect it. And I opened one thing and was so incredibly happy and then opened another thing and was just kind of like, how has this occurred? This is two Christmases in one. So yeah, that's definitely pretty high up on the list. Flame Flam Studios asks, what is your favorite video you made on your channel in the past year? Uh, there's been quite a variety of different types of videos that I put up recently. I think my favorite one is probably going to be the video for Team Labs that I shot in Tokyo. It's quite different from a lot of the other content, but it was something that was very, very close to my heart and I thought the video came out really well. The intro to the video for the Pokemon DX Center in Tokyo also, I think, was like really cool. And I, I, yeah, I kind of was in a silly mood and just kind of went with it and pushed myself a little bit out my comfort zone. And I think that worked really well. But yeah, I think overall it's, it's the video for Team Labs because I just, I, I loved every second of being there and I just wanted to bring that to other people and I, I was quite proud and thought that I'd stepped my editing skills up a bit of a notch in putting that one together. So yeah, I think that's the one I'm I'm, I'm most proud of from a technical perspective um, and also just it has just such amazingly happy memories attached to it as well. Cult of Niche asks if you could be an unlockable character or DLC character in any game, what would it be and why? Uh, Mortal Kombat. I think is uh, probably one of the first things my brain jumps to is that, that, that I, yeah, I would like to be a Mortal Kombat character. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, yeah, that's it. That's, that's the, it's, oh God, one I have an actual singular straight answer for. I want to be a Mortal Kombat unlockable character. That's it. Done. We're good. I actually answered something sensibly. Brilliant. Next question. Hi, Trista. Tom from Lollygagger here. Only one question. Were we robbed? Yes. Yes, we were. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the videos, um, when we were at Play Expo, Blackpool, Jaws 19 and Lollygagger Weekender put together some teams which were made from Grumpy Retro Gamers, Retro Princess and myself. And we went and we did Challenge Annika style scavenger hunt. And the Jaws 19 team cheated. Cheated. We were robbed. We were utterly robbed. I will put some links to the to the videos in the description below so you guys can all see. We were indeed robbed of our victory. There was, however, no prizes, so nobody cared. But other than that, next time. We'll get you next time. Maybe. Possibly. 
Next question. Okay, Trista. Mike from RetroSesh here. What is your favourite Sega console? I mean, it's the Dreamcast, obviously, right? <laughs> Thank you for your question, RetroSesh. Um, you're wrong. This is very much my favourite Sega console, partly because it's the only one I actually um, owned. We had a mask system in the house, but it wasn't just mine. This is mine. This is the one I bought. I love it. It is my favourite. And um, yeah, they're still making good games for this now, such as Tanglewood. So uh, it still has life in it yet. And it is so shiny and so pretty. Um, I do love the Dreamcast. In some ways it was very ahead of its time. There were some brilliant games on it. Don't get me wrong. Soul Calibur, Crazy Taxi, Power Stone. I love it. Um, but yeah, just, just for pure amount of hours played on it and just for how much affection I feel for this, like I will be buried with this. This is this, you know, yeah, this is never leaving my side. Um, the, the, the Mega Drive just wins. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. But the second place for the Dreamcast. Dominic Joe Miller asks, what's your favourite insult from Transmetropolitan? Well, I may have elegantly got the comic book down from up there earlier. Shit. Yeah. No, it's just... No, 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 no. Everything do not fall down. No. Ah! Uh, yeah, I, I looked through and every good insult in here I can't read out on YouTube because I will be horribly demonetized. But everything in these books is gold. And we have a special section for Patreon questions. Thank you to everyone who supports me over on Patreon. You guys are amazing and you help keep the channel going. And um, yeah, uh, it looks like we only got one person's flying questions from Patreon. Um, but they've sent a few, so let's uh, let's see what those are like. McGaffrey, take it away. No, nope, mine's gone blank, bugger that. Okay, no worries. Try again. Pollock's done it again. It's cool, dude. It's cool, dude. Do you have, do you have a question? Congratulations, four years of YouTube and six months of Twitch. Thank you for making and sharing and streaming. It is appreciated. So, questions. Okay, if... You, the technology or the magic existed. What uh, film or book or comic or music would you like to have removed from your memory so that you could have that first experience of it again? For example, I would like to uh, have that first uh, experience of watching The Matrix in the cinema again. That was a film where I came out from the cinema and went, that was amazing! And really, really thoroughly enjoyed it, but it kind of lost some of that or when you go back and watch it again. So yeah, what would you choose? Over to you. Press the button, Jim. Can I just remove some things I don't want back? Like the Cheeky Girl single or uh, the X-Men movies by Brian Singer. Can I just remove those and just leave them that way? Uh, otherwise, I think I'd probably go for William Gibson's back catalogue of books so I could read those again for the, the first time because they had such a profound effect on me and I absolutely love them. And I've got a really good memory, so I still remember them really clearly, even if I leave 10 years between reading them. So yeah, probably probably those. Right, we go on about this in your chat an awful lot, and I know I keep baiting it out. Seriously, what was it about the X-Men movie that just made you go, nope? What? Look, I know you're probably never going to do it in a stream because it would be a massive derail, fun though that would be. But yeah, is there any chance where we can actually persuade you, look, sit down, get comfy, get the snacks, the drink, the hydration, all that, and just Tell us, tell us why, why. I, I, I generally want to know now, I really do. It's like gone on that long. It's like, I keep on forgetting to ask you when I see you at these events, because usually there's a million and one amazing things to be uh, done where there. Anyway, I've uh, rambled enough, continue to be awesome. Yes, over to you. We will do a stream on the X-Men movies, fine. It will happen at some point. I'm not going to get away with not, but it's a massive, it's a massive question. It's going to be a huge long rant. Um, there are many, many, many things wrong with those movies. x Funny is one of my favourite comic book franchises. And no, I'm not including Deadpool and not entirely including Logan in that in that kind of thing. I'm just talking about the primary X-Men singer universe movies I and, and First Class and stuff like that. Hate them with a fiery passion. Yes, even First Class. We will do we will do a Twitch stream on it. I will at some point. Just just keep pestering me and we will make it happen. Planet Earth. Anywhere, 
any when. When and where would you choose to visit? Over to you. Oh, that's, uh, I think probably I would go back in time slightly to when we had more coral barrier reefs and more uh, varied life in the ocean and um, yeah, swim around under the ocean uh, because it's like a whole nother universe. It's like being in space and it's one of the least understood, most undiscovered places that we have. Uh, but obviously back in time to when there was slightly more of it. That's quite got quite depressing now. Um, yeah, all dinosaurs. Hmm. But not if they were going to eat me. You've been quoted on a number of occasions um, when someone has said, Hi, have you seen, insert programme or film here? Your question typically is, is there a spaceship in it? Given that's usually your criteria for I will enjoy this if equal spaceship, what is a film or a TV series that hasn't contained a spaceship that you have enjoyed? There's a question. Also, another question, now with props. Have you read this? Have you? It's quite amazing. Would recommend. Ha! Huh, I've been watching a TV series that's got no spaceships in it recently. Ah, so, so there. Usually, yeah. If it's not got a spaceship in it, I probably haven't seen it. But there are a few series that I really, really adore that are not remotely genre in the slightest. And recently I have been watching Glow. I've seen all of the series that are out so far. It's a remake of a series that was done in the 80s, which is a very, very loosely based on real life about the formation of the first ever women's wrestling company. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I like I like wrestling. I like WWE and stuff like that. And it's just a really good drama and I'm really enjoying it. And it, it's really well put together. And there's no spaceships in it whatsoever so you know win also i've never seen that comic book and i have no idea what it is that's all the questions we're done we made it guys some of them made sense ish maybe <laughs> but we got there that's the main point we got there uh but yeah i can't believe it's been four years on youtube it's it's absolutely insane it's it's a crazy journey and i'm yeah really happy that i'm still here and still making content and yeah, it's it's uh it's been brilliant and thank you guys so much everyone who watches the videos, everyone who follows me on social media, everyone who um, shares and comments and likes and subscribes and all of those things. You guys are amazing and obviously uh, a massive thank you to everyone who is over on my Patreon. I hope you are enjoying all the behind the scenes videos, all the extra videos, the vlogs and stuff that go up there. You guys are incredible. Um, you guys are brilliant and also everyone that uses my Kofi link to send over a PayPal tip to keep things going and everyone who's subscribed on Twitch since I'm now also a Twitch streamer and enjoying that immensely as well. So yeah, thank you guys so much. And um, it's been an awesome year and I'm really happy to be part of this community. It's really been a wonderful experience and sometimes it's stressful and sometimes it's crazy and sometimes it doesn't always go to plan, but I'm still incredibly happy. And I just hope I'm making things that you guys are enjoying watching because at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. I hope you're finding new comic books and new games and new movies and things through the videos I make and uh, just enjoying my stupid Muppet face doing what my silly Muppet face does best, which is just talking endlessly. Um, speaking of which, I should probably stop with the talking and let you guys get on with your day. Thank you again so much, everyone who sent questions and has supported me over the last four years. You guys are incredible. And I'm going to endeavour to keep making content for you. And uh, that's it, really. Right. End of another year. Crazy. See you all in 2020. Bye.